At this newspaper kiosk, like at many others in Cameroon, there are dozens of front pages with controversial headlines. Many newspapers in the country, but also more and more journalists living in fear. David Ayenge and Theodore Chopper are both journalists under probation. They were released three months ago after spending five days at a special police unit. Both men were detained while covering the arrest of Maurice Campto, the opposition leader, who since October 2018 has challenged the re-election of Paul Bia as president of Cameroon. These journalists are now working under pressure. They're convinced the regime is watching them closely. It's like I always have someone watching me, especially when I set out to write a new story. There is a silent voice in my head which screams caution as soon as I pick up my pen. I have to constantly ask myself if my words will not be misinterpreted by our tormentors. The leaders of this country have instilled fear everywhere. Fear is everywhere. Those who aren't afraid are those who've accepted to play by their rules. So they do exactly what they're ordered to do. That's a press under the thumb of the authorities. L'Epervier is among the media outlets considered as being pro-regime. It and its twin newspapers, La Veuve and L'Orphelin, often publish the same headlines. All three publications have their headquarters in this building, which serves as the head office of the media group created by this staunch member of the ruling party. The editorial line is clear. Sing the praises of the 37-year-old regime of Paul Biya, a president considered here as a target of Westerners seeking his downfall. All those white people, call them the European Union, the United States, all those countries. I think their goal is to oust President Paul Biya. To them, he's been president for too long. They want him to step down. But is that how things are done? They stood by him for 35 years, so let him be. Help him have an honourable exit when the time comes. There's no room for such brutality. That's the problem. We'll never be part of such a scheme. In Cameroon's capital, Yaoundé, newspapers are often used as weapons in political battles. Meanwhile, radio stations air fiery talk shows. On air, this radio host doesn't hide his satisfaction with the government's crackdown on protests organised by the opposition in late January. Unauthorised demonstrations where police shot at protesters. His detractors were quick to accuse him of using his radio programme to incite violence. Today, the presenter even justifies his controversial stance concerning street demonstrations against the regime. Because I consider Cameroonians to still being immature as a people, demonstrations on the streets are bound to always turn into the destruction of public property. So if they protest and someone is shot and killed, I really don't care. They will only have themselves to blame. That's what I think, that's what I've always thought, and it's not going to change. A few kilometres away, a popular television programme is aired on Vision 4. A private TV channel whose famous host, Ernest Obama, was suspended for broadcasting tribal hate speeches on his show. The media regulator in Cameroon also sanctioned the TV station owned by this businessman. Oui, Monsieur le ministre. Je suis à vous dans moins d'une heure. Delinga Amogo has been accused of using press freedom to promote ethnic tensions on his channel. The media tycoon claims he's launched a fight against the propagation of hatred and violence on air. If Vision 4 starts promoting hatred and there's an uprising, I'm not sure that all our investments here will be left untouched. Two or three days ago, I issued a notice reminding all journalists, presenters and guests of our programmes that there's freedom of expression in Cameroon. But it should never be used to harm or disregard the dignity of a citizen. 
nor disturb the public order. According to the recent Reporters Without Borders ranking, Cameroon is placed 131st out of 180 countries sampled this year. In Africa, the country is now ranked among the top 15 countries with the worst press freedom.